world. All right. You're welcome to educational world. This is another video lesson today. Here we have NACO physics practical question number two, which is on plane mirrors. Okay. That's light reflection. Okay, for this experiment, we have some apparatus that we are given. All right. So I am going to show you the apparatus necessary for this experiment. Meanwhile, if you find this video educative, informative, and worth watching, I would like you to hit the subscribe button. If you have not done that before, hit the like button and the bell icon for more notifications when I upload other videos, all right? And make sure that you spread the word to your friends out there. All right. We were given the following apparatus. First of all, we have a board, all right? We'll be needing a board for this experiment. And after that, we have a sheet of paper, all right? Sheet of paper. Okay, I have here a plain mirror. Now the next one here is the mirror holder. We are asked to come along with a 30 centimeter ruler. This is a thumb pin. I would advise you to come along with your mat set, which we contain six squares, all right, and Protractor, very, very necessary. Lastly, I have optical pins. So these are optical pins. So the question for this experiment will be displayed on your screen right now. Okay, so you can post this video and take a good look at the instructions and the drawing, okay, to be followed for this practical. Before we begin the experiment, we were told to trace the mirror, the outline of the mirror, I mean, with the longest side, okay, trace the outline of the mirror with the longest side resting on the, on the paper, you are supposed to trace it out, all right? That tracing might be tedious, okay? So to make it simple, we simply have to find out the length of the longest side of the mirror. And depending on your own mirror, okay? But with this, my own mirror, I measure the length, okay? And it's giving me exactly 10 cm. So this mirror is 10 cm in length. So instead of tracing the mirror, okay, on the draw on the drawing paper, we we'll simply have to use our ruler and measure out a length of 10 cm. It's as simple as that. So the first thing we have to do here is to trace out or measure the length of 10 cm, which is the length of the mirror, okay. And we look for the midpoint because the question requires we should look for the midpoint. And the midpoint is what? 5 cm. Okay? And from the midpoint, we are supposed to produce a normal, okay, which is perpendicular. Okay? And that is the process of producing the normal. And this is where the set square, the use of the set square comes into play. All right. So... I have drawn the normal, okay, and the normal is what PQ, Q from the point of the mirror, and the other end is P. And we are also told to produce another perpendicular line through the edge of the mirror, okay, and that is that, that is point A, and the other end of the mirror is point B. And from the question, we are to mark out 1 centimeter, 1 cm from that point A. 1 cm from point A, okay? And from that 
Okay, that's point Q. That's Q. Another place is P. And from A to C is 1 cm. So we are to produce C to Q. A line C to Q. And that line CQ is our incident ray. That is our incident ray. Okay? Now, I am going to do that now. So I have produced my incident ray. Okay. Now, using my optical pins, I'm going to make two points, P1 and P2. I'm going to make two points. That's point P2, and the other point is point P1. All right, so I'm going to make sure I place my mirror, okay, so that it rests on the line I have traced for it, okay? The mirror must rest on the line I have traced for it already, as you can see. Okay, perfect. So the next thing we have to do is to use the other two optical pins, pins P3 and P4, and align it with the images of P1 and P2, okay? That is what we are going to do now. So, I will make sure that the images of P3, that the images of P1 and P2 aligns with pins P3 and P4. So I am placing P3 now, okay? I am observing clearly the point of alignment as my eyes could carry me. And in this experiment, we have to avoid what we call error due to parallax. Error due to parallax must be avoided. So I have successfully aligned the points, okay? Now, the next thing to do now is to remove the plane mirror and the optical pins, okay? And trace the reflected ray. We trace out the reflected ray with our ruler. Okay, now I have joined the reflected ray, as you can see. So, I'm going to indicate it. And mark out points P3 and P4 on it, and P3 and P4, and as well points P1 and P2 on the incident tree. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to produce the reflected ray up to point D. Okay, we produce it up to the other perpendicular line and call it point D. Now, the next thing to do, according to the question, is to measure the angles theta 1 and theta 2. So, this is where the use of the protractor comes into play. So, with my protractor, I measure theta 1. And from my measurement, theta 1 gives me what? 79 degrees. Theta 1 is 79 degrees. All right. And theta 2, measuring theta 2, theta 2 gives me 76 degrees. 76 degrees. You see, the values are somewhat very close. All right? So, my angle of incidence, okay, is um, also 79 degrees based on the principle of alternate angles. Remember, the angle of incidence must inclined with the normal is the angle made with the, with the normal on the plane mirror also my angle of reflection or in this case is was 76 degrees based on the principle of corresponding angles you can see they are somewhat close and these are due to some errors in putting the values into my table of values i will have that when x is what 1.00 cm the inverse of x is also 1.00 cm Theta 1 is 79 degrees. Theta 2 is 76 degrees. And the average of Theta 1 and Theta 2 is 77.5 degrees. And the tangent of 
77.5 degrees is what 4.511 all right due to time factor i have already traced out the uh, the remainder of the experiment i've already traced it out for you so to save our time we just dive right in when x is now 2 cm i've already traced everything okay i will draw out my incidentry okay and i have measured the angle of incidence already and it is what 68 degrees okay now the reflected ray okay is what also 68 degrees due to the fact that from the principle of uh, reflection the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection okay so points p3 and p4 we align with the images of points p1 and p2 such that the angle made will be what 68 degrees and we we'll project it to point d and when we when we make that projection to point d that angle there is also what 68 degrees all right so we we'll just move straight towards computing our table of values so when x is what 2.00 cm the inverse of x is 0. 0.50 per cm theta 1 is 68 degrees the same thing goes for theta 2 68 degrees the average is also 68 degrees and the tangent of 68 degrees is what 2.475 2.475 all right so when x becomes three centimeters okay we will also trace our incident ray okay and put points p1 and p2 the angle of incidence there when measured is what 59 degrees and points p3 and p4 supposed to align with images of p1 and p2 such that the angle there is also was 59 degrees as simple as that and when we produce the point we produce the ray to point d it's also supposed to give us what 59 degrees it's as simple as that. This is the principle of a plane mirror when it comes to reflection. So, computing our table of values when x is 3 cm, the inverse of x is 0 0.33. Theta 1 is what? 59 degrees. Theta 2 is also 59 degrees. Alright? Because they are supposed to be equal. Then the average is also what? 59 degrees. Alright. Then tangent of 59 degrees is what? 1.66 four okay when s is four cm so from point c we will trace our incident ray and measure the angle the angle given us there is what 51 degrees all right now the angle of incidence which is made with the normal on the plane mirror is 51 degrees based on what alternate angles and the reflected ray is supposed to be at angle 51 degrees based on the law of reflection. All right? So when we produce it to point D, that angle there is also equal to 51 degrees based on what corresponding angles. All right? So we now input our table of values. We now say when X is 4 cm, the inverse of X is 0 0.25 theta 1 is 51 degrees theta 2 is also 51 degrees the average is what's 51 degrees as well and the tangent of 51 is what 1.235 and lastly when x is 5 cm okay then uh, we've measured the, our angle of uh, the angle there the angle there is what 45 degrees okay so uh, they like our and we'll draw our words our incident ray okay and it's supposed to the angle at the middle there with the made with the normal is supposed to be 45 degrees and points p3 and p4 that's the reflected ray supposed to align with the images of p1 and p2 so that the angle there the angle of reflection is what 45 degrees okay that's that so because of the law of reflection and when we produce it to point d and measure the angle there is also what 45 degrees 
reason what corresponding angles so computing our table of values now when x is what 5.00 cm the inverse of s is 0 0.20 theta 1 is what 45 degrees theta 2 is also 45 degrees and their average is also 45.00 then the tangent of theta is what 1.000 so this is our table of values as you can see there's a uniform number of decimal placements, which is very, very important. Uniform number of decimal placements. Okay. For the graph plotting, we are going to plot the graph of tan theta against the inverse of x. And the scale used here is 2 cm to represent 1 unit on the vertical axis and 1 cm to represent 0 0.2 units on the horizontal axis. Plotting the points... Now, when x when the when the x inverse is zero point two, then theta is one point zero zero zero, and we mark out the points. Now, when x inverse is zero point two five, then theta is one point two three five. We mark out the points. The same thing goes for when x inverse is zero point three three, then theta is one point six six four. Okay. The same thing goes for when x inverse is 0 0.50, all right, then theta is or 2.475. And lastly, when s inverse is 1, 1 1.00, then theta becomes what 4.51. And we mark out the points. And then we join the points with a straight line, okay? Looking for the line of best fit. Alright. And that is the slope. So we have drawn the slope. Only one point seems to be a little off. So to find the slope of our graph. We draw any convenient right angle triangle. And read, and read it off to the axis. Slope generally is change in the vertical axis. Divided by change in the horizontal axis. In this case. Change in the vertical axis is what? Change in tan theta. So, slope here is change in tan theta divided by change in the S inverse. And the two values I have here, 3.90 minus 2.0 divided by 0 0.80 minus 0 0.40. And simplifying for the slope, we have that our slope is equal to 4.75 cm. This slope signifies or it signifies the midpoint of the mirror. That is what this slope stands for. It stands for the midpoint of the mirror. So this experiment is hinging on calculating the value for the midpoint of that mirror. Alright, so that is that. Okay. We've come to the end of this practical. Thank you for watching.